What's up gamers, Cryptico here, and welcome back to Lowering the Mark, a show where I analyze the current and former world records of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe time trial runs to see how these records get faster over time. We'll look at elements such as the loadout, racing lines, and mushroom usage to better understand what's bringing these times down. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when my videos go live. Welcome to Season 3. It's crazy to me that we made it this far. I've made a few changes that I'm sure you'll find pretty cool. Just a reminder, I post these videos every Monday at 9am Mountain Standard Time, so now you have no excuse to miss an episode. Let's get into it. For today's episode, we're going to start off the new season in high gear and take a look at another fan favorite, Music Park at 200cc. On April 30th, 2017, the world record for this run was set at 1 minute 27.417 seconds by the American player Dash. Just over two months ago, on July 21st, 2020, the world record was set at 1 minute 23.789 seconds by the Spanish player Alberto. That's a 3.6 second improvement between records and a 4.2% faster time. Our former world record holder Dash has broken 5 world records across 3 unique runs and hasn't spent any time holding at least 1 world record. Our current world record holder Alberto has broken 254 world records across 38 unique runs and has spent 866 days holding at least 1 world record. He's gotten a few more records since episode 16 and now holds 22 current world records, the most by any one player at a time. At pre-release, the record was, for some reason, a 136, and within a few days we'd see the record go from 129 to 126 before the start of May. For the rest of 2017, Japanese player Ren would dominate the track for a while, hitting the first 125 and 124 before the end of the year. 260 days after Ren's 124.5, Sturve would come in and snatch the record back and shave a few tenths off of it before putting up a 124.21 that would stand for over 170 days. 2019 would see Davi try to get closer and closer to that 123, but that would be halted by Alberto who put up his own 124.04, then the first 123 just over two months ago, and continued to bring the time down from there. In total, the world record was broken 58 times by just 9 different players. Both loadouts are surprisingly well matched given how different they are. Dash goes with a combo of Daisy driving the Streetle cart with the Crimson Slim wheels and the Super Glider. Alberto goes with a combo of Waluigi driving the W25 Silver Arrow with the Azure Roller wheels and the Super Glider. Dash picks a medium character which means his speed and handling stats are pretty much the same while having decent stats in acceleration and mini turbo. Alberto has a higher speed stat with Waluigi but falls behind in those other important areas. The Streetle card gives half point increases to the acceleration and mini turbo stats for Dash, while the W25 only adds a quarter point in those areas. So far, Dash's loadout is looking pretty superior to Alberto's. Now let's act like we've done this before and see how Dash completely drops the ball by picking the Crimson Slims. They cancel out the benefits of the Streetle card and take out a huge chunk of the grip stat, which are both bad for Dash. Alberto decided to use his brain and pick the Azure Rollers because of their effects on his acceleration and mini turbo stats. Funny thing here, both players pick the same glider, but it has no effect on their overall loadout. While these loadouts look really close in terms of performance, Alberto has the right balance of all the important stats which make this run possible. Let's have a look. This course features a lot of winding roads complemented with straightaways that make up one of the more fun courses in the game. Dash hits a rocket start out of the gate on his way into the first turn where he drifts pretty tight and grabs an ultra mini turbo in the process. He'll then use that boost to come flying down this first straight path here before the next set of turns. Alberto instead uses a mushroom out of the gate and hops into the first turn with two tight drifts each resulting in super mini turbos to come flying down the straightaway before heading into S2 where he already leads Dash by over 9 tenths of a second. Dash tries to contain all his speed through this S turn here by brake drifting a bit and only grabbing two super mini turbos before the drum jump boost and one more mini turbo before the glider ramp. Alberto has the same idea, but he drifts a little closer to the keys while still getting all the boost from those super mini turbos. He hits the jump boost at a better angle which allow him to charge up a super mini turbo before the glider ramp and put him ahead of Dash by nearly 1.2 seconds going into S3. Dash hits the glider ramp and just flies on past the hopping notes into a quick mini turbo before the last drum cut and uses his first mushroom to cut out the final turn through the grass patch before the finish line. Alberto glides on down the straightaway the same way but lands a bit early to grab a jump boost before the drum cut and carry the super mini turbo through the grass patch in order to still make the cut. Those better turns and additional boosts throughout the lap help Alberto claim a 1.3 second lead over Dash going into lap 2. 
Starting off lap 2, Dash just hits the same tight turn on the spiral piano resulting in an ultra mini turbo who used to come speeding past the piranha plants. No real changes here. Alberto actually does the same thing, but he uses a mushroom to charge up an ultra mini turbo and take the turn tighter than Dash does. From there he just cruises on down to the end of S1 where he now leads by just under 2 seconds. I think it's worth noting the difference between our two racers here in S2. As you can see, Dash drifts around the raised keys while Alberto drifts over them, resulting in a tighter turn without being thrown off the optimal line. After those two quick super mini turbos, they hit the jump boost and each grab a mini turbo before the glider ramp. Alberto's lead is now up to 2.2 seconds going into S3. After hitting the glider ramp, Dash just flies on down, hits the drum cut, and uses his second mushroom to close out the second lap. Nothing different here, so let's take a closer look at Alberto's S3. Now obviously he just flies down and lands a bit early to hit a jump boost, but what's interesting is how he's able to pull off the grass cut at the end without a mushroom. He lines himself up just right to where he can charge up a super mini turbo and release it right before the jump boost which leaves him with enough time to keep his speed up with a quick hop over the grass into the finish line. All that is incredibly tough to pull off and even more difficult for 3 laps. After 2 laps, Alberto leads Dash by over 2.5 seconds. The last lap is run the same way by both of our racers, so let's take this time to congratulate the winner of the Season 2 Mini Turbo Guessing Contest. There were a total of 480 Mini Turbos in Season 2, and my guy Tyler Cloward guessed the closest and was only 4 off the total count. So shout out to Tyler for winning the contest, and thanks to everyone who submitted a guess. Now let's get back to the race. One small difference for Dash on the last lap is that he hits a jump boost on the straightaway part of S3 before the drum cut. That's something he probably should have done on the previous two laps, but it would make no difference as Alberto just flexes his dominance by putting up a time that's 3.6 seconds faster than Dash's former world record. So by carrying more speed and taking tighter turns throughout the course, Alberto was able to bring the record time further below 124, a mark that had seemed impossible a few months prior. In any case, it's still a pretty impressive time on a rather unforgiving course to time trial at 200cc. Let's hear what he thinks about that. What was going through your mind when you broke this world record? I was surprised that the improvement was that big. What is it about the Silver Arrow that makes it the choice cart for this track? It has an optimal hitbox for the double coin pickup and the coins after the first bounce. It also helps with getting better turns at the keys, too. Of your 22 current world records, where does this one rank in terms of difficulty level? I'd say it's in the top 5 hardest tracks I have world record on because of the inconsistent coin strat and having to deal with the ending NISC 3 times in a run. Thanks for your help, Alberto. I'll see you next week, probably, for more questions. The best known splits all belong to different runs and were achieved by Alberto. The time that includes the best lap 1 split is pretty far off world record, the time with the best lap 2 is good enough for a worldwide top 10, and the best known lap 3 split actually belongs to the run we just took a look at. The biggest improvement to this world record lies in lap 1, whereas laps 2 and 3 are as fast as can be right now. Alberto has taken this run to its limits, and it seems that only he can drive further improvement for this run. The worldwide top 10 consists of 6 national records and 3 continental records. There's Alberto at the top with the only 123 in the world in front of the Japanese record holder Davi and French record holder Army, both just over 3 tenths off the world record. Norwegian player Pai and Dutch players Sturve and Timo go 4, 5, and 6 with about a half a tenth separating them. We've got a tie for 7th place between Japanese player Tane and American player Technical, and fellow Americans Jimmy and Plunky round out the top 10. Alberto has a pretty sizable lead over the rest of his competition, so this may become a long-standing record due to how tough it is to string together a full run. We'll see what happens. And that's the end of episode 21 and the first episode of season 3. I hope you enjoyed this episode and all the new changes I've made for the new season. I always try to one-up myself and I think I did a good job this time around. If you enjoyed this video, like and share it with your friends and comment on which course you want me to analyze next. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.